All right. Exit interview for Josh Norris. Unfortunate start to the season, missing all of training camp. He was in, he was out of practice, couldn't play the home opener. But when he played in the third home game, fourth game of the season, he made everyone forget all about about it with two goals in that 6-1 beatdown. We're like, oh my goodness, Josh Norris is so back. Unfortunately, he didn't stay back for the whole season ultimately having to go down for another shoulder surgery. How would you describe the season that was for number nine, Newf, this season? Uh, It's so tough, Ross, because he does get 50 games, so a little more than you usually get with Josh Norris when he gets that shoulder injury. So a decent sample size, but for this team to be successful, they cannot have questions of who's the second line center. It's just, it's not going to work. Uh, I feel very confident in saying that either they need Josh Norris to be healthy more often, or they need to find an option or move him to the wing, which we could get to, or they need to find an external option that can be a consistent second line center because the way this team is set up and the way this roster is designed, losing that piece just throws the whole lineup into disarray and no one can figure things out. And when you have young developing players like Ridley Gregg, you can't have him going from being a first line center all the way down to the fourth line winger in the same season. You just can't have that up and down progress for a guy like Ridley. So for Josh Norris, 50 games, 16 goals, 14 assists, a dash six. I think the key thing for Josh Norris, Ross, and uh, this is what I've been looking at here, is on the power play, Josh Norris only scored five power play goals in 50 games. He only had 33 power play shots. Now, his shooting percentage was 15.1 on the power play, so you don't hate that. That's great. You want him to stick around that level. But a couple of years ago, he was above 20% shooting success rate and he was among the leaders in the nhl for power play goals and for some reason and this is why i'm harping on the assistant coach need to be better for the sends for some reason they could not set up the power play in a way that had him taking one timers from his office and ross i can't believe you and i still have hair as i was going to pull my hair out of my scalp watching a power play where josh norris was on the left side and not being teed up for one time. Like, I honestly could not fathom. Even, I would have rather, Ross, them kept feeding him and it get, and it and it not resulting in goals as much as usual than put him on the offside because he, maybe this is a hyperbole, but I felt like Josh Norris was useless on the power play when he wasn't in that uh, one-time spot. So that's going to be the key for him is he needs to be taking one-timers on the power play. Has to. I love that. I think that's the most important thing about next season for for Josh Norris is to put him in a position to succeed. Now, whether that's on the wing or at center, I think is going to be a very hot topic going into training camp, not only because he's legitimately injured his shoulder taking a face off before, but also because his shot is his number one weapon and opening that up is the most important thing. He missed 32 games this season, Pilsy. And he finished fifth on the team in goals. Like, he's still a shooter. He's still a guy who can put the puck in the net. He just needs to be put in better situations. He was also an up-and-coming stud defensive forward. The shoulder injuries have have kind of brought that back a little bit. 44% of the expected goals at five-on-five when he was on the ice. But, like, 30 points in 50 games, like, points per game, that's, like, right with Shane Pinto, who we kept saying had a great season. So... With all the room to grow, there is still a ton of potential with Josh Norris. It's just like in NHL, you know, they have the uh, the video game where it's like what his potential in, but then it's high, medium, low. It used to be high, and now it's probably low about how likely he is to be able to consistently produce that. I still have belief in him. He seems like such a good dude. He seems like a guy who just has a great head on his shoulders, a real thinker. And I think that he wants it. And you can tell it's really affecting him that he can't. Like, how hard is that? Like, it's not that you just won't do it. It's you physically cannot. So let's hope that this shoulder surgery went well and that he's able to come out 100%. Because it was such a nothing play. It was He was going around the net in Nashville, and it just he hit the backside of the net. And he went down, and the season's ended just like that. So I feel awful for it. 
But where would you where would you put him? Let's say he's healthy. Day one of training camp. Like, is he a guy that you have to wait and see how they build out the roster around him? Or do you kind of know where you'd slot him? There's two there's two options here, and I think both could be interesting, and it depends on what they do on defense, how much uh, money they free up here. But I believe, Ross, and I'm glad you, you have a similar thought process, that moving Josh North to the wing could solve a lot of problems for this team roster-wise. Uh, because then they're not relying on him to be the second-line center. You can have Shane Pinto hopefully evolve into that role. He spent time there before, but now you can label him as the second-line center. And then, if you move Norris to the wing, now you can have really Greg as your third-line center, and now you don't need a top-six uh, winger. Like, if you have a top-six of, let's say, um, Brady, Pinto, Batherson, and then Norris, Timmy, Giroux. You could run that as a top six. Now, I'm not saying that's the perfect uh, way to set it up, but you could do that. And then you now you just need a third line winger because now you've got a third line of Ridley, Greg, and Joseph. Now you probably just want a veteran, defensively responsible winger to go on that left side. And you've got a great top nine right there. So if Norris would be open to that, and if the Sens are willing to make that kind of experiment, I think that could be a route you go or you just keep it as is and you need to find a top six winger to play with Timmy and Claude Giroux, right? So there's a couple options here and I think both those work. And the thing is, Ross, and I'll, I'll credit you here because uh, you and I had a back and forth debate when Josh Norris was trying to get into the lineup to start the season. I said, don't have him taking face-offs. That's where he gets injured, protect him. And you said, nope, have him do face-offs and he can't do it, then he can't do it and that's fine. But the, at least we know. Well, Josh Norris, despite only playing 50 games, he was second on the team in faceoffs, only behind Claude Giroux. Now, the drop off is massive. Claude Giroux had 1,100 faceoffs. Josh Norris second with 629. But he's the kind of guy where you could put Josh Norris with a Shane Pinto or a Ridley Gregg, and he can take draws. Like Claude Giroux leads this team in faceoffs. He's not even a centerman, right? So, like, this team has guys that are wingers that can help out those young centermen that haven't quite figured out how to take draws in the NHL consistently yet. And Josh Norris can be one of those guys. So, honestly, Ross, allow him to take faceoffs, have him taking a one timer on the power play, and don't put too much responsibility on him. I think those are the three things that can help Norris be successful next season. What, maybe he's the third-line center to start next season? Uh, I don't know if I would go that way, Ross. I guess more I was saying move him to the wing so that there's less responsibility on him than having him to be that kind of crucial uh, second-line center uh, pivot there. But you, you could you could do that. Like, if this team, this team was loaded top six and was – very bad uh, in the bottom six. So if you want to spread the wealth and get a nice even top nine and roll these guys and, and create more even ice time, that's something I could uh, consider as well. Let us know in the comments what you would recommend for the future of Josh Norris and the Ottawa Senators. Norris finishes last season with 50 games, 30 points, 16 goals, minus six rating, but a guy who has the potential to be a game-changing type talent for the Ottawa Senators. I'm curious what the people think, whether it's center or wing. Citizens, let us know in the comments on YouTube what you think the best route forward is for Josh Norris.